Hi there, my name's the TrueNav, I'm the only me there is, and welcome back to the Satisfactory Non-Series, episode 18 this time, where today I'm going to show you something that wasn't really planned out, but I like the way it's coming out so far. But before I get to that, let's unlock the hazmat suit. Using what remains of my gas filters as well, I'll need to eventually replenish those, but now that I can pretty much automate it, it should be good to go. Kablamo! Milestone reached. With the new hazmat suit and iodine-infused filters, you will be protected against uranium-based radiation. Thank you, Ada. Thank you. And I don't think I can actually check out any of the other ones. Oh, I can, probably. Okay. The next one on the tier list is the Aeronautical Engineering, for which I will need... Yes, that's right. RC units. I could get the hover pack right away, but I don't think I'd have any use for it just yet, and I want to really make use of it properly. So I'm going to hold off on this for now until I get aeronautical engineering going. Let's select the milestone and I'll show you what's up. And what it is, well, it's a new building. Completely unplanned until I planned it. I know that doesn't make much sense, but think about it. The original idea I had in mind was to make a before and after of everything, just have everything done for this episode, and the more I thought about it, the more it came to me that I couldn't just do that. I couldn't just skip past it all. It would be way too much content to skip and to not show you, and so I decided to squeeze this in here. Now what is this? This factory, this impromptu new factory, will be making computers and crystal oscillators that I will then transport via this alternative train track that you can see up here, back down onto the main line that will go into the aluminum factory where I will have one manufacturer just taking in aluminum casing and those computers and crystal oscillators to make the RC units. To get this extra train line going, I've got my block signals and my path signals already set up. I actually don't know if this one works well as it should, but also, I've made a couple of tweaks to my train line, where before I had one single long train composed of one train car and two freight cars in a total of one, two, one, two, one, two, I've decided to split them up into one train that goes into that new factory and then goes back out. An extra one for just the plastic, rubber, and silica, as you can see here, Supercomputer Factory, PRS. And then a third that will be transporting the coal and copper ingots to the aluminum factory, as it had been doing all along. Now, to get computers and crystal oscillators going, I of course had to update the transport system and include silica crystals in there, but also I split off the Caterium ingots down this way, and I also started using this iron node here, which is pure, which allows me to calmly make everything I need to make. And of course, adding to what I already had here, my three foundries making copper ingots, I added an assembler at the end that will be making the circuit boards to make the computers. All in all, not much was added, but you can see how these little things can eventually add up, and I didn't want to show you the end of all this progress without showing you a few of the steps first. Luckily, as far as the updates go for this episode, that's pretty much it. While we work our way to nuclear and to unlocking other things like batteries and so on and so forth, I'm going to proceed now to actually finishing these factories, and I mean actually finishing them, putting up the walls, all the support beams, all the nice little cosmetic things, as well as of course start producing the RC units. With that in tow, I will hopefully finish this episode with yet another one of the milestones, and then from then on we can proceed. Nuclear next episode? I don't know, I'd love to, but first I think we need batteries, so all in all, let's just take it step by step, play it by ear, and see how this goes. One eternity later. Quite some time later, and honestly, I'm finally, finally done. Well, not really, there's still a little bit of cleanup left to do, but for the most part, 
I'm actually done. Now the truth is, this actually did take as long as you think it did, and I did actually bite off more than I could chew, but the more I built, the more I thought, I, I gotta include this and I gotta include that. Ultimately, what I ended up recording was exactly what I said I would, and that is, you know, building up until the completed aluminium factory. In other words, I can already start production in this very same episode of the radio control units. But first, let's show off all the progress. And yes, as I'm sure you saw with the teaser I had to basically censor in the first of the Fixmas videos, we're technically on top of that. And thus I present to you now the main supercomputer base. It's looking really nice, it's looking sleek and modern with the big pane windows, the smooth roofs, and of course, now that the color cartridges aren't needed to actually paint certain things, colors, black-ish green. Actually, I modeled it after a tree, so the main trunk where the spire is has this dark brown, and the actual factory area has a dark green. So sort of like a trunk with its branches. So assuming we somehow landed over here from the very top and wanted to see what was inside, well, we can now. We've got nice doors, a beautiful vista. Oh, we actually have a view of the train station, which you saw before. Nicely painted floors, or rather different textured floors. Now this factory, you already knew about. In fact, they're all the same, just with walls and like, like I mentioned before, the skin, right? This place lags more than ever, but I honestly love the way it looks. I, I really do think it looks sleek. It looks nice. All the windows, all the views, just... Even if there's not much to see, it's it's beautiful. I also tried to make it as symmetrical as possible, but as with everything, it's not really possible. This right here is still just the path I took to get to the aluminium factory. Again, there's still a little bit of cleanup left to do, but that doesn't really matter. Currently, everything is off because I had to save some power and I don't need supercomputers right now. But if everything were working, then those two hypertubes at the very entrance would serve as an elevator system of sorts. Put plenty of doors and ladders for analog access. At the bottom of the largest shaft in the world, I put a jello thing, the, the landing pad, which is perfect because it works at any height. So we drop down into laggy, laggy, lagginess, and we arrive at the base platform, which I made mostly out of asphalt, which is re looking really nice. All in all, nothing much has changed here, just a whole lot of windows and walls, lights, as should be, and my transport systems. Also, as should be. I tried to make sure to use all the good and new things. Hey, train. All the good and new things, new textures and whatnot, just to really emphasize all that Update 5 could bring. Over here, we have the train station at the Caterium Processing, as well as the Caterium Processing Plant, both of which are technically just an extension of the supercomputer factory. Thus, I consider this area also part of the supercomputer factory. We drop in, lights, windows. It's all looking really nice. We've got a platform over here. This leads into the connecting hallway and tower between the main buildings in this area. The only one that it doesn't connect to is the actual aluminium factory. If we head up, we enter this dashingly... I don't know why I'm, I'm thinking like an airport terminal sort of thing, like the, the bridge leading to airplanes. We arrive at this bridge over here which leads into the train station and also offers a beautiful view of the adjacent area. As you can see here, I left a hole in this roof area for the pipes from the actual refineries to just blow their smoke out. It's exactly what I'd always wanted to do ever since I made the first coal factory. And I'm very glad that the developers actually changed the way clipping works so that you can actually clip into the empty spaces that some of these factories produce. It makes this sort of thing actually possible. And since I do consider this a part of the supercomputer factory, like I just said, there's no better example of that than these billboards in the train station. Welcome to the supercomputer factory. Supercomputers this way. Have a satisfactory day. And over there, I think it says something about uh, the exit. Ah, no, this is the exit. It's just don't forget to take a coffee break. Please, please don't. I added a door out here that connects this pathway from this area of the supercomputer factory to this massive building over here, which is, again, where I'm processing circuit boards and crystal oscillators. And I eventually extended it to also reach the petrochemical plant at the back. Once again, nothing major, nothing unusual. Exactly everything as it was, a few manufacturers. I don't actually remember if I ever showed the way this looked before, but 
Nothing new here, just a few smelters in the back, constructors in the middle, manufacturers in the front, all with beautiful light streaming through the windows, and this large area under the train station. I just love the way this came out, it really does look nice. Now this pathway was a crazy idea I suddenly had, and as I was making it, I thought of nature paths, you know? Like, the ones on rocky mountains or so on and so forth that basically offer you a path through the woods that let you admire things from up close and from afar. And as I made this, I thought, well, there's no support beams to it, but who cares, right? There's a lot of things in this game that I sort of cheat on. I, I, I try to make things as realistic as possible where I can, but if not, then who cares, right? It's just a game, and honestly, Satisfactory is so great that you can make up whatever story you want. In my story, some things have anti-gravity, like this pathway, which just looks really nice when you think about it. With the weird fruits that have polygonal shapes, you can pass through them, and also, they glow in the middle of the night, too. Plus, it offers a different kind of view, a different angle at which to view things. Now, because I totally did not forget to actually include the before and after for this place, I'm going to assume you remember pretty much how it looked like from the top that one time, and nothing changed here. I maybe moved a few things around to accommodate for doors and windows, but yeah, this is it. I'd like to think of adding windows and doors and walls and things with different textures as adding layers to how a factory looks. It's not just boring and dull and just one single color, it's got variety to it. Now worth noting is that I kinda left this area over here empty with the plan to eventually maybe include another couple of refineries for future plans. Future plans I have that include building more platforms and such over on the lake to my right. Yeah, that's right, this one. Though I'm not sure exactly of how that will go yet, but there are plans in the works. There's definitely things going on in my head that envision how a place could look in the future with extra things, extra refineries, extra uses for the extra oil nodes I have here. Lots of extras. And lastly, we're gonna go look at the remaining two factories, which are aluminium. We're getting a nice view of this last place here. And then the quartz factory, which is the simplest one and the easiest one I had to make. But it's there that I will properly end this tour. Of course, the piece de resistance here is the aluminium factory. Windows everywhere, plenty of walking room. And you might even think, oh, there's too much space, too much empty space, to which I might answer, yes, but that's that just means there's space for other things. And we arrive at the beautiful factory with a strange sort of pattern in the windows, especially on this top part, which is the first time I've ever done something like that, but I thought it would definitely add a little bit more, that's right, flavor to it. So we step inside into the conveyor belt area. That's what I decided to call it after all was said and done, because frankly, there's too many conveyor belts for this to just be an empty area. Over to our right, we have exactly what you remember from an episode or two ago, which is the refinery and processing area. Out here, just like before, we have general storage. We've got a few more conveyor belts, tying some things nicely together. And we've got the production of casing and sheets over in the back. As I mentioned in the plans sometime before, or if I didn't, then I'm sorry I forgot, but I, re I always plan to have the train tracks go over the player character and have glass foundations to view the trains as they came in. Given the general structure of this building, how it sort of wraps around the tree, I have decided to call it the Donut Factory. On the second floor, as you can see, we've got <laughs> a lot more windows, a lot more walking space, a lot more lights, and all the way in the back, as you can also see, is the manufacturer which is currently off, but not for long, because with you here, I'm actually going to turn this baby on. Let's just crank it up to 200%, and there we go. Should start receiving aluminum casing, and that's kind of slow. Why is that so slow? It shouldn't be that slow. Oh, I see the problem. There we go. Out here, and because I love my viewing platforms and just seeing the beauty of this world, I made a viewing platform. And lastly, for this factory anyway, we have the roof access from this door over here and the area where the windows were, as I showed you before. There's nothing here except this little area here with, again, space for these stacks to blow out their smoke whenever they're active. 
nice open area with this hallway that connects back to the train station. And lastly, we have the truly tiny quartz processing annex. The best thing about this thing is that I could eventually extend it out to use some of the other nodes here in case I ever need to, but for now I don't need to. It's also why, at least one of the reasons why, I decided to just make this train station unique in that it's an open air train station. I also added this thing because all of the train stations have on the front a billboard telling you where you're arriving to, but here there is no wall to which attach it to, so I made this and I think it looks pretty. And again, just like with everything else, nothing here has actually changed. I just added walls and windows, which was actually pretty hard to do here because the limited space I gave myself without knowing meant that I had to build sort of within the boundaries of the tree, and if you started building too high, you lost foundations or walls to the invisible barrier that the tree has, its own hitbox. Which is why I had to make this sort of Z-like structure here, this zigzag, which in the end I very much like. And as you can see from this view right here, no, I haven't gotten around to the tower. If I had made the mini spire here to connect all the other spires, I would have taken even longer, and honestly, I didn't want to take any longer than I had to. One final thing before I wrap this episode up, that I decided to build out of the blue, honestly, simply something I thought, hey, this could actually help me later on make things a little more convenient, was another hypertube system, this one leading to the computer factory and back. And it's arguably one of my tallest builds, though also one of my emptiest. I mean, the, the tallest are the spires, but this, this was just interesting to make on its own. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this episode. And honestly, this really did take a lot longer than I thought it would. I vastly underestimated just how long it would take to gather all the building materials, you know, put up the walls, design some of the, the aspects of each of each thing, because though I had a general idea of how I wanted everything to go, which, as I've said before, it's one thing to imagine it, and it's just another to actually put it into action, put it into actual words or ideas that translate into the game. The other two reasons, honestly, that I took as long as I did to make all this was the Fixmas event has been consuming a bit of my time. I've got some plans for that, as you also no doubt saw by the spoiler in this episode, wink, wink, and also a few commitments in, you know, real life. So what's up for next episode in the Satisfactory non-series? Simple, maybe a little bit more of exploration. I'd like to find a few more drop pods, get things ready for the next tier or milestone to unlock. Speaking of which, as this episode runs, and by the end of it, of course, by the next one actually, I will get aeronautical engineering, as well as I think I can probably maybe manage the other two milestones before heading into tier 8, which will be swell, really, really swell. As for the next episode, I don't know when it will be or what it will be about. Fix Miss isn't over yet at this point, and I do need to prepare for that. And I think that'll be a good one, but of course, when that time comes. Before I keep getting distracted, uh, the next episode will probably be aeronautical engineering combined with a battery factory somewhere, somehow, I don't know where yet. And then after that, we're definitely going to head into the swamp to explore and build what is uh, what I've been planning, honestly, to be the largest factory yet. At least... In my head it is. It's going to be massive, it's going to be multi-layered, it's going to be flavorful. And all those good, good things. But for now, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Satisfactory Non-Series. If you liked it, then please, thumb wrestle with that like button down below. Comment and subscribe if you dare. But if not, then, well, you know, that's life. But as always, I'm the only me, so you be the only you. See you in the next episode.